So, hi everyone, Jacob aka Mini Infected Musician here. Welcome to my first ever YouTube tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I paint the armor of my Space Wolves. Um, it's sort of a grimdark style and I would like to give a shout out to Sad Cascagoon Miniatures who has been my inspiration for uh, sort of converting to this grimdark style of painting. I have come to really enjoy it and uh, I hope that uh, I can uh, show you how, uh, how I do this. Uh, if you're uh, interested in learning the basics of grimdark style and also advanced techniques, I suggest that you head on over to Sat Cascagoon Miniatures YouTube channel. There will be a link in the video description. And uh, well, let's uh, head on over to the workbench. So, uh, these are the products that I'm using uh, when I paint the armor of uh, the Space Wolves. So, um, as you can see here, I use a black surface primer. We have some Vallejo Game Air Black. Vallejo Game Air Somber Grey. Uh, we have the Wolf Grey and the Dead White. I also use uh, Cyril Shade Coelia Green Shade and uh, here is the secret weapon which is a uh, an enamel wash by Ammo of MIG, a dark brown wash uh, which I have started to enjoy a lot. I also uh, use some airbrush thinner and an odorless uh, enamel thinner as well. And this is the figure that we are going to paint today. It's an uh, uh, infiltrator. I have uh, also sculpted a little uh, sort of wolf pelt on uh, one of the shoulder pads and uh, also a space wolf emblem. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, prime the miniature black. I usually uh, go over the miniatures like uh, two times with uh, the primer just to get a good coverage, so to speak. And uh, so there we go, the model is primed. Next step is uh, I'll do a 50-50 mix of Vallejo Game Air Black and Vallejo Game Air Somber Grey. And uh, this mix I basically airbrush over the entire uh, model. Um, even a bit from uh, below. Uh, th this is basically going to be the uh, the color of the of the deepest shades. So um, uh, I like to do it uh, from at least straight from the side and a bit from down below, but uh, especially make sure that it covers the uh, the top parts of the model. Um, <clears throat> and you will see later on when we go on to the brighter colors how this will act like a sort of shade. And we're back. And uh, the next step is uh, just somber gray. And with this color, um, I basically do a Xenophil highlight. Um, as you can see here, I'm uh, holding a brush in basically a 45 degree, or well, the airbrush, uh, spraying it on from a 40, uh, 45 to a zero degree angle, so to speak. Uh, just uh, making sure that uh, that I don't go like too much from below the miniature, because this one I really want to. Uh, uh, at this stage, I want to really. Like see that we get some uh, some changes in the color here. So uh, this is basically a highlight, a cenothal highlight, as you can see here. 
Well, I uh, do apologize if the, mo if the model is a bit out of focus and it's a bit far from the camera, but uh, well, let's face it, it's my first tutorial. Uh, I'll learn this as we go along. And the next step is uh, Pure Wolf Grey from Vallejo Game Air. I, I really like these colors. Uh, you don't have to mix them and uh, I think they flow pretty nice from the uh, straight out of the bottle. Uh, and now we are also going to use uh, or do a Xenophil highlight, but this time I'm going to pinpoint like um, the the highest area, so to speak. So at the top of the shoulder pads, uh, the top of the head, um, the top of the arms, the knee pads. Um, you'll see as I go on. Uh, here you can see it pretty well. Uh, I also got the the tip of the toes. You can see, and also here at the ankles and the uh, calf protection, the ass protection as well. Don't forget that. Oh well, yeah. There we go. Uh, just some small touch-ups, which you will always have to do. <clears throat> And I hope that you can start to see really like the 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 effect of the of the highlights here. Um, I think that this is probably the step when uh, when you can see the most difference and it it really starts to pop. So the next uh, next color we're going to use is the dead white, and I basically go over the exact same areas as I did with the wolf gray, but. Just a little smaller, you know, like a little bit more focused. So it's like, well, yeah, you get what I mean. It's a, it's a really light highlight that we are going to do here. Um, in very specific areas of the model. So it's, it's basically the same areas. Knee pad, the head, the shoulder pads, on top of the uh, of the gloves, you know, the calf, uh, the tip of the toes, the backpack, um, just to emphasize the highlight a bit. And there we go. Okay, so this is when the fun begins uh, and we're going to use the Coelia green shade as I showed you. So what I do here is basically I give the model a complete overcoat with uh, the Coelia green shade, but I mostly do it from below. So uh, like more, more shade from below, but then I will also cover it even on top and from the sides and well basically from everywhere but a bit more from below uh, this step could also be done with uh, with a regular brush you don't have to use an airbrush for this I uh, I just decided to do an uh, uh, to do it with the airbrush for this tutorial uh, it, it's a bit quicker and you get a more smooth coverage um, and the uh, the shade feels to me that it dries a bit faster as well if you use the airbrush. So here you can see, uh, but we also don't want it to dry too much because now comes um, a really interesting step. But as you can see, I covered the entire model with Coelia green shade and uh, we are now going to start to remove it. And to do this, I use the airbrush thinner, which is uh, from what I have guessed is uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, this is what I usually do I pour it up in a little cup and I use a q-tip or a cotton swab or whatever you call it uh, we're not going to do our ears this time but we are going to use it on the model so I basically load it up with these uh, alcohol and I start to dab all across the model and uh, uh, especially on the on the areas where I want the underlying color to really shine through and uh, what the in 
what, what the White Spirit does here is basically reactivating the Coelia Green Shade. Uh, and you need to be a bit careful here because you don't want to like uh, drag the 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 cotton swab against the miniature because then you risk uh, of actually like uh, reactivating the the acrylic paint underneath and you might risk to pull that off as well so just dab it against the miniature you could also use uh, a brush for this like Take for instance a, a brush that you usually use for air uh, for dry brushing. That that also works fine in this stage, I would say. Um, and you you will see when you do this that the Coelia green shades start to set a bit better in the recesses, but but it's still left a, a little of the of the color on the on the other surfaces as well, which makes it uh, look. It's like a filter, basically, over the entire model. And I really like this effect. And it it helps to uh, sort of bring out the... Well, bring out the shades or uh, bring out the highlights. And uh, this is basically the first step into making it grim dark, if we say like that. Well, and uh, as I told you before, uh, go check out Sat Cascagoon Miniatures. Uh, it's a bit of a tongue twister, that one, I think. <laughs> but uh, go and check his YouTube channel out. He's really the expert on this. And he has some really nice tutorials. And what I usually do in the end of this step is go in with a regular brush, also loaded up with alcohol. And this is just to get to the hard to reach areas because we don't want to dab the cotton swab into that, into those small and narrow places because then we really um, risk like uh, destroying the underlying paint. So uh, just use a regular brush for that type of thing. And uh, as you can see here, I'm. I'm quite thorough, just be, because you don't want to leave uh, Coelia green shade like uh, in on the really raised surfaces, because then it just looks like the regular coffee staining, basically. And all we can do now is to wait, and uh, while we wait, why not make some suiting music? With that nonsense, get back to the workbench. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. And then we're back, and our Coelia green shade is now dry. And you can really see how this has sort of made a grim dark feel already. Now we will go into one of my favorite steps where I'm going to be using an enamel wash from Amo by Meg, um, called Dark Brown Wash. And this is when it really gets that grim dark feel. Uh, so I'm using an airbrush for the uh, application of this uh, wash here, but this can just as easily be done with a brush as well. Uh, I've done it with a brush on several miniatures and I can't say that I see any difference in the end result uh, but it's basically the same as with the Coelia green shade when you apply this with uh, the airbrush it tends to uh, it feels like it dries a bit faster and it um, it, it it becomes uh, a smoother uh, overall shading basically 
Uh, but other than that, I can't see no uh, particular difference. And now it has dried. And uh, one thing that I usually do with this is uh, I actually use uh, uh, a hair dryer just to uh, to dry it up a bit. Uh, but but it's the same thing here. You don't want it too dry. We're going to go in with an enamel thinner uh, here and basically repeat the step that we did with the Coelia green shade. So uh, yeah, pour some of that nice liquid up in a little cup and uh, do not drink. But instead use your typical cotton swab and uh, well, begin the little dabbing process again. As you can see, I, I, I basically repeat the Coelia green shade step. And uh, in, in the same way as the uh, white spirits reactivated the uh, Coelia green shade, the uh, uh, enamel thinner reactivate, uh, reactivates the uh, enamel wash. And of course, this is uh, basically uh, based on your own preferences like how much you want to take away uh, of the um, uh, enamel wash. But I use it to, well, bring out the highlights. And as you reactivate the enamel wash, you will see that, oh man, it just settles so well in, in the recesses. Um, I have really come to prefer enamel washes to uh, acrylic washes because the enamel washes they they just flow so much easier into those recesses and they don't leave those coffee stains that you can get uh, well let's say that we would use a dark brown uh, acrylic wash instead um, you you know that if you do a, an overall um, shade with an acrylic wash you, you basically get like uh, coffee stains. It, it, it looks like coffee stains. And uh, you will have to paint it over with the original color. And uh, an enamel wash is much easier to have control over because it dries uh, slower and you can, during a long period, just reactivate it with the help of a thinner and you can remove it. Uh, very easily with the help of a brush that I used here in the end. So uh, here it is uh, before it has dried and uh, we will once again play the waiting game. Then we're back and it has now dried and you can see the final result. Um, this is basically how far... Uh, let, let's say that you're painting like a squad of 10 guys, 5 guys. Maybe you don't want to do like uh, chipping and a lot of weathering on all these guys. But well... Uh, this is a step that I would go to if I paint a lot of guys. But uh, even though this might be a stage that is enough for uh, most parts, I uh, will show you how I do the uh, weathering. I use a sponge uh, and I use the wolf gray in this case. Uh, try to get as much color off the sponge as possible before you begin this process and be really really 
gentle when you apply this. Uh, so th this was a bit hard to show, apparently. I couldn't keep the uh, figure in the picture. Um, well, <clears throat> uh, might have been able to do a bit better job there. Well, uh, but as you can see, I dab it quite lightly and mostly on the like edges of the armor but also sometimes just across like uh, larger flat uh, surfaces, uh, uh, surfaces as well um. and when I feel that I have gone as far as I can with the sponge I also go in with a uh, regular brush uh, a smaller brush and um, for this part, I mostly just like add uh, like chipping uh, on the uh, on the edges. So it almost becomes like a sort of edge highlighting, but um, you want to make it like jaggy uh, and make it look like it's uh, well, like it's chipped. Uh, no, um, well, you know the the shipping the shipping sh shouldn't be like smooth it should be really jagged and uh, unregular so to speak and you can see that i almost sort of like dab the brush a bit just like uh, small small dabbing motions and uh, well, when we are finished, we will get a result which is uh, something like this. You can see those small, tiny chips of uh, light gray there. And for the next step in the weathering pro process, we're going to use uh, black paint again. So what I basically do in this step is that I um, I sort of put the black in the middle of the largest white uh, or, or uh, wolf gray uh, chips. That is where I start. Then I also add some uh, small black chipping uh, across the armor on other places as well. But um, but it gives a really nice look if you um, if you take those larger chips of um, of wolf gray and just put some black in the middle of those, uh, then you will get a really nice effect. So I just uh, keep doing this all across the model until I uh, until I believe that I'm finished. Until I feel that I'm finished. And um, well, as a lot of guys have said before me, um, less is more in uh, many cases when it comes to uh, to this type of uh, weathering. So uh, start with a few uh, places. And uh, if you think now that, nah, that doesn't look uh, chipped enough, well, add on to that in that case but don't go all out crazy and just make chipping all over the entire model because then you it's really hard to turn that back so it's better to start small uh, and uh, go uh, bigger or uh, go more uh, so to speak so here we can see the finished uh, model and uh, well, uh, this is my way of painting Space Wolf's armor. And uh, well, there's basically nothing more to it. I will uh, go up with some more tutorials on like the gold and the leather, the weapons, the furs. Uh, but for this, uh, I think we will settle with uh, just going through the painting of the armor and when I hold it this close I hope that you can see all the small small chipping that I've done and basically that's it <laughs> 